Bring in ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky, ABC News chief investigative reporter Josh Margolin, and ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd. Uh, Shauna, I want to start with you. What does it mean uh, from a legal perspective for this case to go from a local crime to a federal terrorism case? What we're looking at is a more severe crime that's occurred, and it, what it is, they're trying to do is encompass everything that's happened and ensure that they get this higher charge. This act of terrorism is going to allow for him to be looking at a life sentence. It also allows for each of the individuals to be covered under this act, because it's a general act of violence against an, a particular group of people in, designed to intimidate and strike fear in them. Uh, Aaron, on the one hand, James called police to tell them where he was. On the other hand, he wasn't actually at that location once they arrived. So what do they make of that? Do they think he wanted to get caught or was this some kind of a game? It's too soon to know. We're told that James was not talkative other than to ask for a lawyer when he was taken into custody and when he was taken out of the station house and transferred to federal custody. Uh, he did not make any statements as reporters shouted questions. Uh, but it seems almost like he wanted to turn himself in, didn't it? Because he'd been wandering around New York, Brooklyn and Manhattan at least. And there he is in the middle of the day. His cell phone battery is, is dying and he calls police to say, I've seen myself on social media and television. I think you're looking for me. And he was found a block from where he said he was. Uh, bystanders noticed him. That picture of him had been all over their phones, on television, everywhere. And so they were finally able to point police in the, in the right direction. And he was taken into custody without any incident at all. And what do they know, if anything, about his movements before he was arrested. They understand when he came into New York in that rented U-Haul van. They spotted it going over the Verrazano Bridge at about 4 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, so four hours or so before the attack. They know he got on the R train across the platform and blended in with commuters trying to escape the chaos. They know he made it into other parts of Brooklyn by getting on a city bus. But from there, they lose him, and security cameras don't appear to pick him up. They're using his Metro card, the fare card, Card that you would swipe to get on the subways or buses to see where else he may have gone and how he ended up entering Manhattan where he was arrested. And Josh, the NYPD now says that the use of a smoke bomb in this attack is especially concerning. Why is that so important? It shows tradecraft. And this has been a problem or concern for the NYPD since the first minutes of the attack on Tuesday, Diane. They were immediately saying this attack showed coordination, showed planning. Now, coordination doesn't necessarily mean that there are others involved, and actually they're saying that they believe he acted alone, but they're concerned because this individual went ahead and planned it. He plotted it. He bought supplies. He carried the supplies. He plotted a getaway. He plotted a getup that he was going to wear to try to blend in. All of that suggests that this is not random, and that always makes investigators worried about something that he might have been planning additionally or that other people are planning something similar. Now, Shana, there's been a lot of focus on the suspect's social media accounts. How might his posts impact his case? His post may impact his case because it can show premeditation. It can show that he was planning, knew what he was doing. He was aware. Um, I know that there's been some speculation of possible mental health issues. All of these are going to speak to state of mind that he was in coming up to this particular event, and it will be used in evidence coming in his case. And Josh, some are also calling the social media posts a cry for help. So what kind of conversations is this attack sparking among leaders about increasing security, but also increasing services like mental health care. Well, that's obviously what's going on right there. You know, the there's a suggestion that the hate-filled nature of the posts indicates maybe terrorism or a hate crime. Other people are saying it just is, as you say, a cry for help. And maybe if this person had gotten help and had been diagnosed, maybe there was a way for him to have, have not suffered whatever it was that led him to have the, an episode where he wanted to act out this way. And Aaron, the police are also raising concerns now about bad actors trying to exploit this attack in online messaging. What are they finding there? They're finding that, as often happens after one of these attacks, the extremist groups try to take advantage of, of all stripes, domestic, foreign. Already, Diane, they've noticed that ISIS and Al-Qaeda-linked groups have posted messages on their social media indicating praise for what Frank James has allegedly done. But so far, no evidence that he was operating in support or supported by 
any larger terror organization. Nothing like that at all. They still don't fully understand the motive, but it appeared from those social media posts like he had a number of different grievances that all mixed together with whatever psychiatric issues he may have had, and, and, and together that may have led him, according to police, to, to shoot up the subway, a place that he was familiar with. All right, so Shauna, where does this case go from here? Where we're headed from here is now they're going to submit this to a federal grand jury. They're going to seek the indictment. Once they have that, this will proceed to a criminal trial. And that's where the discovery process will begin. We'll, a lot more information will be exchanged between both sides. And later, probably a year or so, a little bit you know, further down the road, we'll start to see a criminal trial. All right. Shauna Lloyd, Josh Margolin, Aaron Katursky, thank you all. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.